in the previous video, we made it so whenever we press the E key, it called a function for us to interact. Now we're going to actually set up some basic functionality inside of that function to make it so when we press E, it actually does something. So first thing we need to do is actually get whatever we want to interact with, so whatever we hit when we press E. And the way we're going to do that is I like using line traces. Now you can also use overlap events, which is something else that I will be covering. But for now, we're going to do line traces, especially considering it's a first person game. So whatever you look at is what you're going to want to interact with for the most part. So to begin, we use line traces. Now there's a several different ones that we can use and I'll try to do a brief overview. But the first thing we're going to use is just line trace single by channel. Now to do this, you can't just do line trace single by channel. That's not going to do anything. What we need to do is starting from the world. So we do get world. We can do line trace single by channel. Now the world is everything you see around you. It's kind of its own class. So we have our world settings, for example, and there's specific things that exist inside of it. So for example, the game mode exists inside of the world. So it's specific kind of level to level. We do get world, get line trace by channel, and we can look at the parameters, which go figure, it is not wanting to show me in this. Nope, oh, now it's showing up. Come on. There we go. So what it does is it outputs an F hit result. Now this is just a giant structure with a lot of information in it. And that we'll be seeing here in a moment. Then we have the starting and the ending location. So they are both F vectors. Now F vectors are just a, a struct that consists of three floats, X, Y, and Z. So they're just coordinate points inside of the world. And then we have the E collision channel or the trace channel. We're going to go ahead and start. Very simple. We're going to create a starting location. So F vector start. And we're going to set that equal to our control location or our camera's location. So that way, wherever our camera is, that's the starting point. So camera or first person camera component. Get component location. So wherever the component or the camera is, that's where we're going to start. Now we want to have an endpoint. And we need to specify the distance of how far that line trace is going to be. So we're going to specify the endpoint by the distance that we want to travel for the line. So to do that, we're going to use our control rotation. We're going to multiply that value. So what I mean by that is F vector end equals start plus we want to get the rotation so first person camera component get com component rotation we have to convert that to a vector and we multiply it by the distance that we want the line to be so in my case unreal engine works with centimeters i want it to be 500 centimeters and there's our start and our end location. So now I want to have the other parameter, which was the first one, which was the out or the F hit result. So F hit result, hit or hit result. And now we can just plug these in. So hit result for the first one. Then we have the start location, the end location of the line, then the collision channel. So E collision channel. And we can select any one of these that we want. So there's a bunch of different trace channels that we can customize to our own liking. However, let's just use world. Now we use world static. And then we have the F collision query parameters, which we're going to want to set, and the response parameters. So F collision query param. So params, and then we're just going to fill it out. So params dot, let's go through the list. 
add ignored actor. We're going to add ourselves as the ignored actor because we don't want our line trace to pick up ourselves so our own character when we're using it. That would cause some problems as we would always be hitting ourselves. But then we just pass in Brams. And I spelled that wrong, like so. And now we're good to go. So by default, if you read it, it returns a Boolean. And the very last and little block of this says true if a blocking hit is found. I'll explain what a blocking hit is here in a minute. So we're going to wrap this in an if block. And then print out a log stating that we hit something. So UE log, log temp, warning text, hit, actor. Then we're going to do a check. So if hit result dot get actor, we're going to print out the name of the actor. So we're going to do percent s, which I'll explain here in a little bit at the end of this video. Hit result dot get actor. Get name, and this will allow us to see the actor that we hit. Let's go ahead and do a hot or a uh, live coding and see what happens. If I press E, I hit the floor. Press E, hit the big wall. Press E, hit the editor cube. I'm hitting all the different cubes. So to look at what a blocking hit is. Let's go over to really any blueprint. I'm going to look at the capsule component. So now when we look at and we scroll down to the collisions tab, we go underneath collision presets. You can see trace responses. And that's what each of, where is it? That's what the collision channel is referring to. So the trace response is what you're going to hit. So right now we're also using the object responses, but we can have our own trace channels if we wanted to that are dedicated to line traces. So we could have our own channel, say like, for example, we could set it to game, game trace channel one. We could have our own custom channel for that. And we could set the mesh to be the only thing that blocks trace channel one. So that way we will only get a hit when we hit something that has a blocker for game trace channel one. We do not have any custom channels like that right now. So we're just going to leave it by default. And then close that down. We now know which actor we are hitting and we can move forward from here by doing some checks and seeing if it's able to be picked up. If it is, then let's go ahead and pick it up and attach it to ourselves, which will lead us on to the other part, which is sockets and what they can be used for. So, because that's gonna be probably another 10 minute video, I will leave that for a separate one. So, if you like what I'm doing and you wanna help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description. And if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord server that's also linked below. And as always, I will see you in the next video.